New emails obtained by Fox Digital reveal that business executive John Nevergold tapped earlier this year to serve another term on President Biden's Advisory Council on Doing Business in Africa had been a longtime business partner of Hunter Biden's. For more on this, let's welcome New York Post columnist John Levine. John, it is always great to see you. Um, let's talk about this for a moment because we've got some of the emails here and I'll read you the first one. Uh, this is from John Nevergold to Hunter Biden. It says, Hunter, Merry Christmas and a Happy New Year to you and your family. Looking forward to 2015 being a successful year for Rosemont and ABD and for for us expanding our work together. Let's make it a profitable year. Enjoy your vacation and catch up after the new year. Best, John. Right, well, there's nothing remarkable about people in business together trying to make money. What's now remarkable is when the one of those business partners' father is the President of the United States and then the other business partner is now taking an administration job on you know in business development in Africa, exactly right. what they were talking about. So, you know, it's any time you have a, uh, a business partner of Hunter Biden getting a, a administration job, it should raise red flags. Yeah. Because you have to wonder about improper access and whether they're still using their connections to profit, you know, you know, for their for their own personal businesses. It would seem that that is the case. For the people who've denied that the Hunter Biden laptop exists, they have a lot of egg on their face now, and they realize that the family does have very strong business connections and ties to, you know, to companies in China, Ukraine, um, for example, Kazakhstan. Um, right. And so you stand back and say, wow, this is still going on, and you've got people out there denying who the big guy is. Right, right. Um, and you saw the Bidens vacationing for Thanksgiving in Nantucket. They don't even seem to be phased by any of this. Not at all. And I, you know, when I was going through this reporting on Fox News, what struck me was this is not the only time we've seen this. If you look at the hard drive during the Obama-Biden years, there's, it's replete with examples of people close to Hunter Biden getting into administration posts. People like, there's a man named John McGrail who went on to become a official in the Treasury Department. And that came after a personal request from Hunter to Joe Biden. And people like Eric Schwerin, the president of Hunter Biden's investment firm, was, you know, tapped to a White House position, an official position in the White House. And he visited Joe Biden in the White House and dozens of other uh, people in, in, in official buildings and official capacities during that period. Yeah. So it all raises a lot of questions about what was what was the access here? And as we're sitting here and we're watching pictures of the protests going on in China and we see the president not really taking a tough stance on it, I'm going to read a second email from John Nevergold. If we can put it up, this one is also to Hunter Biden. Um, and I'm just going to read one line of it. He, he says, you know, first he says, let's catch up. And then he goes on to say, and go over some ideas on how we can work together overall on the China initiative. I mean, you sit back, this wasn't just about Hunter Biden doing business in China, but lots of people were trying to profit from it and they're involved in this administration's work and and you sit back and ask yourself well how could this not be influencing their response to what's happening on the ground right now one of the key questions the house hunter probe seeks to ask is to what extent joe biden is compromised by his son's business dealings yeah. because we know that even though he said he had no involvement there's been one piece of evidence after another to show that that's not true right he's golfing with business partners they're coming to meet him in the white house they're taking money from foreign companies, you know, 10% for the big guy. We've seen so many pieces of evidence. And so, you know, when you see a lack of response to what's happening in China now, it just further flames, you know, fans the flames of those questions. Yeah, this story and the Elon Musk story are stories that keep giving every single night. And we're going to continue to talk about it in the break. You mentioned to me, and this was a great point. We're going to hear a lot more about this come January next year. And so we will have you back on again. Thank you so much. Good Thank to you see for having you. me.